welcome to coaching topics that do work. Yay! So as, as ADHD coaches, sometimes folks aren't sure what to work on. And so we wanted to make things to help people realize whether they're guild members or not, or clients or clients of anyone out there, like any ADHD coaches, what are some topic ideas that you could potentially bring to coaching? Yes. Um, see our previous video on some that are more challenging. Again, not off the limits, but, but these are the... might give you ideas too, if you're not sure. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, so, um, and coaches, clients of any coach, these topics might not work for other coaches, but uh, they often are... Um, uh, uh, they often are ones that we have either had specific uh, positive experience with or sort of think that yeah, this is a general um, kind of area. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to say off the bat, and given that I am on the spectrum, even if even before I knew, and uh, even if someone else does not know, um, it there is a propensity to uh, um, vibing. <laughs> Like it just people who are like naturally uh, come together. Um, so I think this might be a slight spectrum kind of thing, but I personally find that 95% of the coaching topics I'm brought are here's the thing that needs to happen. Either it just has to happen. I don't want to do it. Or I actually, it's like a hobby. I do want it to happen, but it's kind of like hard or I don't want to in certain ways and I need it to happen anyway. That's like, that's, that's the show um, in, in, in different clothes. Like I need to file my taxes. I want to play guitar more, you know, all these different things. And, uh, and, and it, it's not happening. So how do I make sure it happens? That's, that's it. So um, yeah, uh, one of the greatest ones overall is calendar use and good calendar habits because, hey, it's hard to benefit from coaching if you don't show up on time. Yeah. Um, how about uh, like using well? Like, so you need to have the habits and, and also like maybe you've got some indecision around what calendar or planner or whatever you might be using. Um, well, I get a lot of people who feel an obligation to use a particular type, even mm. though it's maybe not the best fit for them personally. Mm. Um, I have well, of course that goes into it, but like selecting one that's a better fit for you, just don't get too caught up in making it be perfect or the ideal one, because that can be a whole thing. Yeah. And there's no such thing as perfect. It's just, it's just um, more beneficial than another option. Yeah. And there's and, sometimes and the trade-offs, like thing, this would be better in this way, this would be better this way. Yes. The very most, spoiler alert, the very most important thing is just picking one and sticking to yes. it. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Uh, um, how to tr keep track of uh, assignments, either at work or school or other, um, but those tend to be, because like, yeah, we, we the memory is a terrible place to keep it. So where? And that becomes very idiosyncratic, has to be. Um, and then Brittany and my absolute favorite topic of all time, task management, which is obviously many, 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 many books have been written about. So we're just going to say that, like, what does that mean to you? What, what, like, you know, <sighs> if you're yeah. not sure and you're losing track of stuff and very similarly is, um, keeping our commitments to other people who might be feeling frustrated or disappointed in us. That can include a domestic partner or other people who we're close to. And, and while we are definitely, definitely not a relationship therapist, what we can talk about is getting to a place where we're making more realistic commitments and yes. thus disappointing people less. And that is a spectacular thing to bring to coaching. Indeed. Um, prioritization tends to be super hard for ADHD. And uh, when you, especially if you're a verbal processor, talking it out and hearing the ideas outside of your own head can be a way to chip away at the confusion around that. And sometimes it can, it can, help because the coach is taking some of the mental load of of helping with the decision at least uh, uh, examine the decision not probably telling you how to make it hopefully but um <laughs> but yeah um and, and sometimes it's permission to do the thing differently that we end up yes. coming to but the fact is if you're uncertain about something and your brain 
is just shifting between thing and thing and thing and, and like cycling and indecision, coaching topic. Mm -hmm. People who don't necessarily need, um, you know, I need to learn about my ADHD from coaching sometimes continue to see a, uh, an ADHD coach because of that indecision loop that we get stuck in. And yes. for those folks, folks it really is a quality of life improvement. improvement. That's, that's yes. Uh, what uh, what I, get I get out of coaching when I get coached is, is uh -huh. often just getting out of that loop and talking something out so that I, so that I can make some, some of those hard calls because what else is prioritization except, except deciding stuff that, that can't happen. happen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It uh, doesn't matter if, if, you, if you can do everything, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. Right. Um, uh, using tools to augment memory. I mean, that's basically what a planner is. That's what task management is all about. It's about this goes the here. But those aren't the only ones. Like there are other yeah. things and talking it through with a coach, especially especially one who enjoys talking about such tools is a great idea because we can't expect ourselves to remember, especially really boring details. That is not a realistic ADHD expectation. Lots of small little details, not so much. Um, especially when they're not connected to anything else. And so there are some different tools and finding one that's a good fit for you without mm -hmm. overwhelming you yes. is the trick. Yeah. Uh, another big one that commonly comes up is routines. Um, mm -hmm. And I've actually had some clients who are like, throughout a session, ah, so I'm not going to do routines. But, um, you know, I hope like if then that's great. Like sometimes it's like, wow, this is actually a thing that I think I should have. and I'm not going to do it. Great. Uh, but yeah, what, what are the routines that I actually would benefit me? Um, and and like, but what's what's the reasonality? Like what what's <laughs> that's a new word. Uh, accountability. Like why? Because before it was like, oh, I really want to do yoga and journal and take a few minutes to meditate, blah, blah. But there's no immediate motivation to do so. So how do you, how do you make that happen? Um, but also like a lot of the things that can get us stuck is indecision. So I'm not sure if I should exercise first or have breakfast first. And, and so just having somebody you can externalize that to, and that will ask you if you did it the same way can be so much more powerful than only committing it to yourself where it's very mm -hmm. easy to take it back and get stuck in indecision again. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's a lot of the things with coaching and routines that is helpful is, is really just having, having that, that other person, but also another person's perspective to say, to say hey, hey, you know, some of my clients get stuck with this part. part. And, and so that you can maybe skip some, some of those, uh, 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 what was the word? Retry where you try it over and over again and then see if it works. <laughs> Test and uh, check, that kind of thing. There you go. Um, another good one is, uh, well, you've kind of said it, anything that you have a block around, anything that you've circled the block a few times and you're like, eh, and you just are not sure what's going on. Um, you know, a coach is a rubber ducky who talks back at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you need something to shift. Sometimes just saying it out loud is amazing. And sometimes we need permission to say it to another human being. Um, but there are other reasons that we can develop blocks around stuff. A lot of times it's around our self judgment and stuff. Yep. And that is a spectacular thing to bring to coaching is I am stuck on this thing. What yep. do now? Yep, absolutely. Um, large assignments or projects that are not going to be done in, in a span of time that I can mentally encompass like a, a PhD thesis or, you know, a, a book being written or something really big like that that's important and it can be broken down into small pieces but we have to realize a thread and we have to have some kind of cohesive way to engage with it more than never or the day before because it could even be like a big term assignment like it doesn't have yeah. to be like i'm writing the great american novel or canadian nope. novel or whatever um <laughs> it doesn't have to be something that huge either it could just be like hey there's a class assignment pretty sure i can't get it all, get it all done the night before, before. So, so how, how do, do I make this a thing, thing that I'm strategizing and engaging with, you know, you know earlier that. than that? Yep. Um, related to that, planning and following through on projects of any size, right? Uh, longer term tends to be uh, more challenging, but even, even smaller term, if it's like, especially if it's boring or easy, like people are like, it's not hard, it's just easy. Mm, things or, that are easy, amazing coaching topics because we're bored. What are we going to do? Or ones where you're not accountable to anybody but yourself. Like, I yeah. really want this to happen, but no one else out there yep. notices or cares if I don't until yep. I've reached 
some other level that feels so far away. Yep. And so how do we get there? How do we break that down? How do we make it accomplishable and sustainable over a longer period of time? Yes. And, and coaches can offer accountability. Hey, how's that thing going? Do we need mm -hmm. to alter our strategy? Mm -hmm. um, but also somebody to celebrate with the accomplishments. Like everyone will celebrate you if you publish a book. Like who's going to celebrate you because you started one and did like part of a chapter, right? But we need that. We need that more frequent acknowledgement of our accomplishments. Yep, absolutely. Um, also planning uh, events of any kind, uh, especially social, um, like, you know, I, I, I personally want to go camping. I want to go on a road trip or I'm getting married. You know, I have these large social events, uh, how, how do, what, what do with that? How do you, those are a bunch of micro decisions and a bunch of work. So, yeah. Um, and then of course, chunking things down, which everything I just mentioned is pretty much that, um, how do you find joy in your life? Mm. I've had so many people lately. I don't know if it's a pandemic thing or what, but people have just like, I honestly don't know what, what is joy to me. I have not really had that. I've had like social media, which is the same thing. <laughs> Well, sometimes I'll bring it up because another like kind of related reversal coaching topic is when somebody's just obviously burned out and, and they're at that point, but like, you know, three weeks in the Bahamas is not an option. And so like, how do we reg regain some of that functionality again? And sometimes it ends up being finding joy and yep. finding things that we, that really rejuvenate, rejuvenate us and refill our well. Our well. And, it's and it's shocking, shocking how often people, people don't. don't uh, uh don't, don't really, really stop, stop and think about that yeah i mean we're, we're not taught to so hey coaching topic um yeah similar to that hobbies like again i i like to play good i personally don't but i hypothetically like to play the guitar how do i do that more than never right i i, I like to do it but it takes it's it's like however much you put into something it's what you get out of it social media easy to open easy to scroll not much you get out of it but playing the guitar it's like it satisfies my soul yeah so it, it, it's how to, how to strategize around that. Um, the opposite studying, like how, how do I study? And furthermore, what, uh, what ways do I best take in information, right? Like I, I have a client who uh, absolutely must exercise prior to studying. Like if she, if she doesn't do that, then she does not focus, right? So understanding that and, and running experiments along those lines. Um, so th the next one is a bit of a caveat, like an asterisk, emotional regulation. This one gets very quickly into therapy territory, especially when it's intense, but to a degree, especially if your coach is your only ADHD knowledgeable person in your life, then uh, understanding that at least being validated on the fact that we experience intense emotions and have challenges in this area is can be really vital. But sometimes it comes down to strategizing being in a different situation. Like if your roommate makes you angry all the time, maybe we need to look at other housing options, right? Like, and then that's a thing that we can tackle together. And it came out of emotional regulation, but a lot of the times, like there are actual things that you can strategize with a coach. Other times we end up saying like, this is more of a therapy topic, but it just depends. And it never hurts to bring up a topic. Well, the worst, the worst we can say is, yeah, yeah probably not. not. Should, Should we talk, talk about, about finding a therapist together? together? Yes. Yeah. Um, organization, which is one of those words that encompasses basically the entire universe. Um, but you know, it, it, it can come down to paper, paper clutter. It can come down to physical objects, clutter. It can come down to doom room or the doom, whatever closet or, or digital organization or task management sometimes it comes back to it's a word that means a lot of things to a lot of different people and so you know we will hopefully i'll break it down a little bit and try to understand what's important to you so that we're getting at what really matters and not just some generic organization tip because you can get that on the internet you don't need to pay a coach for it yeah pretty much um budgeting and financial management which in my personal experience often comes down to i'm spending more money than i should basically and like and no budget is going to solve that so understanding what is going to deal with that sometimes it's not even a spreadsheet or whatever which could be too boring to manage anyway um but yeah like like what, what is at the root of the budgetary and or financial 
struggles. And again, uh, this could be a cooking topic. Money is a cooking to- is, is sorry, a therapy topic for me personally. So that's it's a whole. And thing. It, sometimes it comes down to like literally just taking your auto payments. You have to manually enter your credit card in on Amazon or blocking Amazon or whatever yep. place is your place, making sure yep. that it is a little bit more of a mindful choice yep. every time you make a purchase. That, there's different things that we can strategize depending on what the specific money issues are. Yep. Um, I touched on it briefly, but the, uh, the, how do you take in information? You know, uh, different people, ADHD are very visual, which is why calendars exist. That's not true. Age people didn't invent calendars. I don't think. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah. Uh, how do I take in information? Um, emails. How many coaching topics, Brittany, have we spent on emails? Very, very many. Them. Spoiler. It is never a perfect solution, but your life can suck less a lot yeah. with, with that as a coaching topic. And it is totally one we can bring up. Yeah. Um, self-advocacy, which ironically you mm. might have to do in an email. <laughs> um, but you know, with, with your medical field, with your academic connections, with even family or friends, uh, just setting boundaries and, or, you know, seeking accommodations at work or school and just mm-hmm. saying, no, I need this from you, or I'm going to find it from somebody else. Yeah. Yes, strategizing, really like, how am I going to talk to somebody about yeah. it? That is a perfectly fine thing to bring to coaching. Yeah. Um, like it's one of those things that's related to feels, but like, it's okay. We can strategize like what's the best, um, what's the best way to handle this? Like, how would you get your needs met? Like, what are your mm-hmm. needs and talking about like, okay, what do you really need to not happen? Mm-hmm. And how do we, how do we do that in a way that might yep. sound palatable? You can even ask your coach to rehearse it with you. Yeah. Um, another, another collection, ones that I get brought all the time are the basics, sleep, laundry, like feeding myself, exercise, cleaning, these things that just never end. We'll never stop eating. We'll never stop needing sleep, you know, and, and those, those are hard often they're boring. So all of those things you think, well, I should be able to do this, but is it happening? And if it's not, then coaching topic. Yeah. I'm just going to run through the others. Maintaining motivation and momentum, taking notes, perfectionism, procrastination, punctuality, balancing larger goals while also doing the day-to-day mundane stuff. Those are all really good topics to bring up to a coach. So if you're out of ideas and your coach says, what would you like to coach on today? Those are some ideas. Yep. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much for joining us for some good coaching topics and we'll see you next time.